The court hands down judgment today in the case of William Morrison Supermarkets PLC and various claimants. Here is a brief explanation of the judgment. This is one of two judgments handed down today which are concerned with vicarious liability. That is the legal principle under which one person, who is not himself at fault in any way, is held liable in damages for wrongdoing committed by another person. The most common example is the liability of an employer for the wrongful acts of its employees committed within the course of their employment. The present case is one in which an employer is sought to be made liable for wrongdoing committed by an employee, and the central question is whether, as the principle requires, the wrongful act was committed by the employee within the course of his employment. Andrew Skelton was employed by Morrison's, the supermarket operator, as a member of its internal audit team. In July 2013, he was subject to disciplinary proceedings for minor misconduct and was given a verbal warning. From then on, he bore a grudge against Morrison. Later that year, he was given the task of transmitting Morrison's payroll data to their external auditors for a check on the data's accuracy. He carried out that task, but he also made and kept a personal copy of the data which contained the personal details of all Morrison's staff. Some months later, he uploaded the data of around 100,000 of Morrison's employees to a publicly accessible website. On the day when Morrison's financial results were due to be announced, he also sent the data to a number of national newspapers. He did all this in a way which was designed to cover his tracks and to cast the blame on another employee who had been involved in the disciplinary proceedings. Skelton was arrested, prosecuted, and sentenced to a period of imprisonment. Morrison's acted promptly to have the data removed from the internet and to protect their employees, but were nevertheless sued for damages by around 9,000 of their staff. After trial, the judge held that Morrison's were in no way to blame for what had occurred, but he found them vicariously liable in damages for Skelton's wrongdoing, on the basis that Skelton had committed the wrongdoing in the course of his employment. The judge held that applying a judgment of this court given in 2016, called Muhammad, it was sufficient to establish vicarious liability that Morrison's had entrusted Skelton with the data in the course of his employment in order to transmit it to a third party. In his view, they had taken the risk that they might be wrong in placing that trust in. What he had done in disclosing the data on the internet was, in the judge's view, closely related to what he was employed to do. That decision was upheld by the Court of Appeal. Applying their understanding of this court's judgment in the Muhammad case, they held that Skelton's wrongful disclosure of the data had been within the field of activities assigned to him by Morrison. The fact that his motive had been to harm Morrison's was considered by the Court of Appeal to be irrelevant. Morrison's now appeal to the Supreme Court. Unanimously, the Supreme Court allows Morrison's appeal for reasons explained in a judgment given by myself with which the other members of the court agree. The judgment explains that the decisions of the courts below were contrary to the established approach to questions of this kind and were based on a misunderstanding of this court's decision in Muhammad, a decision which was not intended to depart from the previously established approach. The test which generally applies 
when deciding whether an employer is vicariously liable for the, wrong, for the wrongful conduct of one of its employees is that the wrongful conduct must be so closely connected with acts that the employee was authorized to do that for the purposes of the liability of the employer to third parties, it may fairly and properly be regarded as done by the employee while acting in the ordinary course of his employment. In applying that general test to particular circumstances, guidance can be derived from previous court decisions concerned with comparable situations. There are many previous decisions concerned with employees who deliberately inflicted harm on people for their own reasons, taking advantage of opportunities which their employment made available to them. The general rule in cases of that kind is that the employer is not vicariously liable since the employee does not commit the wrongdoing while engaged on his employer's business but while engaged in an independent venture of his own. In the present case, Skelton was not engaged in furthering Morrison's business when he committed the wrongdoing in question. On the contrary, he was pursuing a personal vendetta, seeking revenge for the disciplinary proceedings some months earlier. In those circumstances, applying the established approach to cases of this kind, his employer is not vicariously liable. 